Hello, my name is Mark Miano. I am our VP of Sales and Partnerships here at Glue.io, and welcome to Glue Academy, Video 7, Opportunity Cost and Inventory Data. Um, in parentheses, Merchandising and Operations Data. There's so many things to title this, not sure which one to pick, but titled on Opportunity Cost and Inventory Data. Today we're gonna to talk about optimizing your capital, cash, time, money, um, as it is super important to understand how to use the tools at our disposal to run our business in the most profitable way possible. If you're looking at my screen, I am in Glue.io, the software as a service output, which we're so famous for. And if I go to products inventory, you're going to notice a lot of data here, okay? Sell through rates, inventory velocity. I'm going to come back to this screen very soon. But to get us super accelerated here, I'm going to start with this quick PowerPoint to lay down some foundational frameworks. Opportunity cost. The loss of potential gain from other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. In other words, once you make a decision, you can't get the time, money, resources used to make that decision back ever again. So for example, let's say um, I sell a t-shirt out of my warehouse to John Doe. I can't take that same t-shirt and sell it to Jane Smith. Obvious, absolutely. And driving home the point, I hope so. Um, that's a demonstration of what opportunity cost is for a product. You can obviously apply that to money, time, et cetera, but that's the idea. Why is this concept important? Your business depends on it, right? So again, we can never get the time, money, whatever it is that we've expended on a decision back ever again. So it's really important that we make really good decisions with the limited amount of resources that we have. Here's a major problem that this opportunity cost exercise and inventory management exercise causes, uh, solves, excuse me, not causes. Uh, the discount spiral of death problem, if that wasn't dramatic enough for you. So here's the situation. Crazy Cray Clothiers missed their revenue numbers for 2018, resulting in a lot of overstocked inventory across the business. The response that Crazy Cray uh, initiated was with so much excess inventory, they ran a site-wide discount for three straight quarters. And as a result, the Crazy Cray Clothiers liquidated the excess inventory and controlled the damage and the bleeding but then they started noticing they were having trouble over this interval, having serious trouble selling full price products or, or their products at full price. The reason? Crazy Cray got caught in the discount spiral of death. The customers who would have bought at full price have now seen Crazy Cray Clothiers discount so heavily and for so long that these original full price customers now see no reason to buy at full price anymore, expecting that there will be a discount in the future. This is a problem, one of many that we, this particular exercise can, can solve, but I'm sure we can relate, if not personally, with someone that we know in the business. Now, here's the analysis we're going to run. So the definition of merchandising the operations data analysis is to ensure that cash and capital is being leveraged in the most optimal and profitable ways possible. We all have finite resources, so it's important that we maximize the profitability, aka use of those resources. For example, if all of your cash is tied up in a product that no one wants, well, obviously that's a bad thing because the cash locked up in that product can't go into other areas of the business to grow the business, like advertising spend, uh, buying the right product to sell, the product that people want to buy, which is profitable for me to have in stock, new warehouse, warehousing and expansion space. The opposite of that, of course, is if you missed out on the opportunity to make money because you didn't have enough of a high demand product, that's also really bad, right? We can't get that opportunity to sell that product back again once we have lost that opportunity. Conclusion. Let's make sure that we have just the right amount of product to meet demand for the people who want that set of products, but not so much of the product that you're getting in the way of your own growth by locking up your cash and things that no one wants. Now, as a means to an end to get to solving some of these problems and to reaching some of these goals, we're going to have to understand some important KPIs. And the first one is going to be your sell-through rate. This technical mathematical way of Explaining the sell-through rate is 
your sell through rate equals the number of units sold in a given time period divided by the amount of units you had on hand in the beginning of that time period. Your optimal sell through rate number you're gunning for across all your SKUs is 100%. If you're over 100%, you sold more than you had. You missed out on the opportunity to make money. Shame on you, right? We're here to make profits and money together. Are you under 100%? Well, now you have more than you sold. You're locking up cash and products that no one wants. Shame on you again. Now, the key to understanding sell-through rates and to, uh, to discuss the barrier to entry here is this. The difficulty in measuring this number is that the time period to manufacture and reload a product, which we call lead time, fluctuates. So here's an example. I was actually in Starbucks the other day waiting for my Americano here and noticed the barista had a clipboard and a piece of paper and she was literally taking notes about how much she had in stock of each item, bags of coffee, mugs, you name it. The reason why she was doing this was not for fun. The reason why she was doing this was to help Starbucks calculate their sell-through rate so that Starbucks could optimize its use of product and cash across their global business. Now, let's say that Starbucks' sell-through rate was 60 days. What their managers would be doing is every 60 days, they would tally up how the quantity available of each SKU and send that back to headquarters. But what if Starbucks decreased their lead time to 30 days? What if they were able to engineer some type of supply chain relationship where millions could be spent if they decreased their lead time? I don't know, what, some, some universe. Well, they'd be SOL because what's been happening over the past whatever historical data set is that their particular custom, uh, excuse me, managers were only annotating the amounts of units on hand every 60 days, not every 30 days. So if Starbucks changes its lead time to every 30 days, Starbucks is going to have to wait for all of their managers to re-engineer their business processes to tally the amounts of units on had on hand every 30 days, not every 60 days. It might take a years to accrue enough historical data in order to make the right call when using your sell through rate under those circumstances. Now, I'm sure that everyone looking listening to this call doesn't have doesn't have a dedicated person going through their entire warehouse annotating the amount of units they had on hand of every SKU every single day. That's unreasonable. But because you have glue, what our systems do on our on our servers is we actually automatically catalog this number, the amount of units you had on hand at any given day, as long as you're integrated, and we'll reference back to this ratio automatically in order to optimize uh, your, your numbers and your understanding of your, of your business. So this is a really important uh, metric and we'll come back to it a little bit later. Inventory velocity, the units I sold per day. Now my inventory velocity for Santa hats in December will obviously be higher than my inventory velocity for Santa hats in April, right? Santa comes in December, not April. So another time dependent metric and definitely keep your eye out, your eye out for this, especially if you're seasonal. Depletion days, my quantity left in stock divided by how many units I sell per day. It's the amount of days left you have of the product given demand for that product. Again, pay attention to this if you're seasonal. Holding cost. Oh, I should say, pay attention to this always, but especially if you're seasonal. Holding cost. Your quantity left multiplied by your cost per unit or your cost of goods sold. This will tell you the amount of cash you have tied up in any given product at any given time. The higher this number relative to your other holding costs, the more willing you might be to discount, liquidate that product and turn it into something useful. All right, so let's move back into here. Oops, excuse me. And we're going to look at glue.io now. So the first thing I'm going to look at is my lead time. Is it 30 days, 45 days, 60 days? It's going to vary. I have a client who has lead time of 250 days. He almost has to predict the future, which is super important. It makes this even more important of an exercise. Now, 
the key of understanding this is look at my sell through rate, inventory velocity, depletion days, out of stock date, and holding costs. These will fluctuate both based on my date picker, what date range I'm looking at physically, what season of the year is it, if you're seasonal, and also my lead time. Now, the key is creating segments. We want to match up the right segment of products with the right segment of customers. This is called segmentation optimization. And the first exercise we're gonna practice is full price products for full price customers and discounted products to value shoppers. If you're not familiar already, a value shopper is someone who only buys when there's a discount. Um, if I'm in glue, I'm gonna to go to customers list and you'll see that this is a predefined segment in glue.io called value shoppers. They only buy when there's a discount, okay? Now, I work with a company that sells merchandise for thousands of musical artists, and they have a problem. When these artists have a big concert, the t-shirts they sell at those concerts go cold. It's kind of bizarre buying a t-shirt to a concert that you've never been to. Kind of weird, right? But we can still liquidate this product intelligently and make a lot of money off of it. Now, they're not going to just send these unwanted products, these cold t-shirts that no one bought at these concerts to just anybody. They're going to actually match them up and send them directly to the value shopper, okay? So, create a segment. And let's say I, I, scheduled, this, I scheduled this before. But let's say my sell-through rate is less than or equal to 75%. I'm only turning over three-fourths of my stock in the past quarter or in the past 30 days because the date picker. Let's say my holding cost is greater than or equal to arbitrarily 5K. That's when I start getting nervous about having too much product on hand. Or I'm not comfortable having that much cash locked up in anything. And then maybe my depletion days is greater than or equal to uh, 30. Or because my lead time is 30 days, I'm okay with a depletion day of 30 days too. Um, send to value shoppers, right? I can actually save this segment of products, save it in the system. I'll add metric to a new report. And then I'm going to come over here to the customer area and attach that particular segment of products to my value shoppers. I don't have any in this particular account, but I have people who only buy when there's a discount and match up the right product with the right customer the overstock product I need to get rid of anyway with the people who only buy when there's a discount. And the magic in this exercise is not necessarily for such an obvious move, but the op but saving the opportunity cost, which is saving the full price product for the full price customer. You're actually knocking out both of these stones at once if you do this correctly. Now here's another example. Discount products to at-risk customers. Now. Pay attention, go back to video, I believe three, which was last point if you haven't already seen it, and brief yourself on the difference between an active, at risk, and lost customer because you won't get it if you don't watch this video. When you're at risk, remember, when you're at risk, you are just about to lapse, right? You're just about not to buy again. And you might have heard me in that video say, hey, you might want to offer a discount this moment. Here. Let's say I had a second purchase at-risk customer. Status is at risk. Well, I might discount. I might do the same thing. I'm going to take this segment of people and offer them a discount, not for the third purchase. I'm doing this exercise to build habits, to get them to buy a third time so they come back to me and buy a fourth time on their own. That would be the data science via leveraging a customer segmentation optimization by targeting at-risk customers with a certain segment of products, in this case, a discount. Here's another one. Maybe new and more expensive products go to VIP customers. Interesting. So now what we're doing is we're not discounting, we're doing the complete opposite. Hey, Mr. VIP customer, you spent so much money with me that you qualified for this exclusive set of products, which are a limited, a limited offer, and we only have 10 of them, and I'm going to let you know that they're available so you get first dips. Or 
discount products to VIP customers. I work with a company that sells a lot of uh, like uh, yarn and stuff, and they have so much product left over that it might actually make sense to maybe gift overstock product to your VIP customers and make them feel really special. The point, guys, is if you can master matching up the right product with the right customer, you're going to get that flywheel turning a lot faster than you otherwise would on your own. And you're going to use your capital, both time, money, and physical capital in the most, and human capital, your time, in the most optimal, optimal way possible. All right. Well, that's all I have for you to, today on uh, today's Glue Academy series. I'll see you on video eight.